I would like to call to order the special meeting and work session of the Newport News School Board for Tuesday, March 10th, 2020. On behalf of the members of the school board and the superintendent, I welcome each of you present or watching. Our quorum is present to transact the business of the school division. We will begin tonight's meeting with the pledge to the flag. Mr. Harris, would you do the honors? All right, stand please. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Harris. So, again, um, welcome to tonight's meeting. I uh, hear the Newport News, uh, this is a time that. Uh, the Newport News Budget Committee works diligently to allocate resources in a responsible manner that are conducive to providing a quality education and educational environment to the children of Newport News. The fiscal year 2021 budget addresses strategic objectives of achievement, advancement, and youth development through funding for compensation, academic programs, and school environment. So we're here to do the budget. Mr. Uh, Dr. Parker, Ms. Mary Lou Rousseau will take us through the budget presentation this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And I will take the floor with this presentation. And good evening, uh, Chairman Hunter, Vice Chair Searles Law, and board members. Uh, this evening, for your consideration and future approval, I will present the proposed FY 2021 operating budget. Uh, joining me uh, for this presentation will be Assistant Superintendent of Business and Support Services, Ms. Murray, Mrs. Mary Lou Rousseau. We'll begin with ADM. Um, each year, it's important that we continue to track and monitor our average um, daily membership and the trend because our state funding uh, is, is uh, projected by that uh, eight average daily membership. As you can see for the uh, fiscal year 2021, we're projected to increase by 31, our ADM is projected to increase by 31 students, uh, which is positive. Um, that's usually on a March 31st um, projection uh, where the state provides the uh, revenue for the fourth quarter. And, uh, and we also project our year annual uh, student membership by ADM. And specialty groups, uh, in particular, um, we look at pre-K, um, our pre-K enrollment and other special student groups because that also uh, factors into our budget, our budgeting. The Virginia Preschool Initiative um, in Newport News, we began a preschool program uh, using just Title I forms, for, uh, funds before the state began funding preschool programs, and we continue to use, in part, um, Title I funds to support our preschool programs. However, the state funding is based on formula by, by student enrollment, and currently our VPI cap will increase um, next year from 996 to, to 1,067 students, which, uh, which uh, will allow for us to uh, add an additional 71 students prior to uh, using Title I funding. So we are, uh, we'll see more kids enrolled in pre-K under this next operational budget. As in the past, uh, we do expect our English language learner enrollment to increase again next year. Uh, we have seen continued growth in this group, and as you will see uh, later in the presentation, we are continuing to accommodate uh, for growth in this population in order to maintain our quality of service to students. So we are accommodating with additional staff, uh, which will be in the proposed budget. Uh, we're projecting an additional 72 students for fiscal year 21. Um, we are also seeing a significant increase in our special education population. We've reviewed the data and it appears that there is an increase in the number of transfers and students coming from uh, not only surrounding school divisions, uh, but also in, uh, from the in military connected youth um, over the past five year period. Um, that's a significant growth in students. We're continuing to, uh, we're projecting over 150 additional uh, students with IEPs. Um, in, uh, in our school division next year, which has really put a uh, strain on our staffing um, and our service. However, we've been able to meet that need, not only in additional by adding teachers, but also looking at our service model for special needs students to remain in compliance with federal law. 
So looking at our budget process where, um, that brought us here today, um, we began with the school board retreat in October. Uh, the department leaders submitted their input um, in, the, in November and December for budget consideration. In January, we had uh, a work session with the school board uh, where we looked at some of those priorities that we're proposing in this year's operational budget. We also uh, had our first initial meeting of our budget advisory committee, which has been very helpful through this process and will continue to support us throughout the budget process. In February, uh, we participated in a joint meeting with the city council and the school board to review our anticipated budget priorities. I thought that meeting went very well. It gave us a great opportunity to engage our city leaders on the needs of the school division uh, before they actually saw dollar figures uh, in the form of a proposed operating budget. Earlier this month, we held an employee input session uh, and a public input session uh, with the community. And we also collected survey results from our school board members to determine our final projections for this budget. Um, and that brings us to today where we're presenting a budget and we will talk about next steps at the end of this presentation. So in developing this budget, we, uh, we've identified several of our budget drivers and we'll talk a little bit about in detail uh, this evening as we present this budget. Um, in developing the operational budget, it's important to know what factors are driving some of the decision making. While this list does not contain all of the factors, uh, these items were key to ensuring that our proposed budget met the current needs of our school division. In addition to our student enrollment, other budget drivers include the services that we provide our students, which are driven not, um, by our strategic plan. It is important to note that ultimately the amount of revenue that we um, expect to receive from the state and the locality will drive what we are, what are able to accomplish in our budget. Education is a very labor intensive process and as you are aware up to 80% of our operational budget is spent on salaries and benefits to employees. We spend most of our money on people. Therefore our compensation strategy is an important budget driver. And finally, we have some non-compensation needs that are um, our budget drivers as well, such as technology and, uh, and maintenance, which we will discuss um, in further detail. And I'll begin the, um, the budget drivers by talking about our academic supports. Um, this listing here are some of the key academic supports that we uh, plan to either expand or put in place for fiscal year 21. Um, one of the key academic drivers this year is the one-to-one -one expansion of technology in our secondary schools. Newport News seeks to empower students to extend their learning beyond the classroom by providing access to devices and educational content outside of the typical school day. Most one-to-one -one initiatives, folks, um, rather than focusing only on putting one-to-one -one devices in the hands of students, our goal is to look at a true digital conversion which requires a holistic approach to transforming learning using technology. Beyond just devices and infrastructure, professional development for teachers, online textbooks, and a technology-enriched curriculum are foundational to the success of any digital conversion um, initiative. The Newport News Public School Technology Plan calls for the development of a comprehensive digital conversion plan that includes a take-home device for every student in grades 6 through 12 by the end of 2023. There is much work to do over the next strategic plan in this area, but we will begin the funding, uh, funding those, th that transformation in the 2021 budget. Another big rock in this, um, in this next operational cycle will be the uh, literacy, will be um, our work with uh, student literacy. Newport News is, uh, will be implementing an improved K through 12 literacy plan in the fall um, of 2020 to support struggling readers. This plan will provide increased Tier 2 and Tier 3 supports for early um, elementary as well as middle school programs. Pull-out services will be created for our most struggling readers using research-based instructional practices. This plan will include the following. Increased reading instruction beyond the classroom for students in K-2 through that are falling behind based on our current assessments. A dedicated reading class for students in middle school who are non-readers or, or um, struggling readers um, and based on reading inventory data. Professional development for teachers um, over a few years on, on teaching struggling readers um, and on also helping struggling writers. 
and then continue professional development for school leaders on using reading data to improve practices in their schools. Other initiatives that you have noted there include our, our expansion of STEM initiatives throughout our school division, focusing on our early career programs, um, and we're continuing to look at other math assessments that will allow us to provide tiered support for students as well. Another area that's driving our budget will be, um, as we mentioned, um, our English um, language learners. We're currently expecting to see 72 students added to our roles next year. So uh, what, are we, what do we expect our ELL enrollment to increase? We, um, we have seen continued growth in this group, and it has been unpredictable over several years. But our state currently is funding us um, at 20 teachers in the proposed budget per 1,000 students. Um, and what we're expecting to do is we currently fund our ESL teachers over 20 more positions than what the state actually allows, pays us for. So we've always overstaffed, um, and, and I'll share why that's important. Our, our projection right now is for three ESL teachers, additional ESL teachers, to accommodate some of that growth, one instructional assistant and a registrar. Now, why is, um, why is increased staffing remaining a, a driver for our budget on the next slide? You'll see that our ESL students are achieving at a high rate. When you look at our, our English, our pass rates for accreditation, our ESL students in English and math have done fairly well. But what factors into that score is the access for L's testing that they take. And that's noted on the bottom of the slide there. And what we're seeing is that last, this past year, our, L, our access to L scores actually dipped. So what we know is that as we continue to see students increase who are coming to us in English is not their primary language, we need to continue to maintain a solvent model of service to those students to continue to see those type of scores that we're receiving with our EL population at this, particular, um, at this time. We can't continue to see our access to L scores go down because that will impact our overall accreditation with, the, with EL, ELL students. So the additional staffing will continue us to maintain a, a good ratio uh, well above the state's ratio. Right now we're, we're at 30 to 1. Um, the state actually funds us at 52 to 1, which is not a serviceable model. Serviceable model. So we know we're investing in our students there and we're continuing to invest in, invest in students in future budgets. Another area that we're focused on is in student welfare, student well-being. Um, in the area of student welfare, uh, wellness, meeting our students' mental health needs is a team effort. We would like to add two licensed clinical social workers to our team this year. If the state funds um, additional school counselors, it's possible we will need to add more to our team as well. The governor's budget, and we're looking at the governor's proposed budget in a moment, but there also is a state and uh, senate and house version, but the governor's budget in particular re would require us to add eight counselors at the elementary level. The, um, the increases in staffing for school psychologists helps to facilitate individual and group sessions for students exhibiting extreme behavior deficits and in turn promote the academic, social, emotional, and behavioral development of students. In order to ac accomplish this, we need a lower ratio than our current staffed ratio of 1,815, 1,815 students per one school psychologist. In addition to working with students this year, we have had many work, many, uh, work with staff from schools to assist with trauma, from student loss, and from teacher loss. So our, uh, um, adding these supports has benefited us tremendously this year in this year's budget, and we, continue, we would like to continue to expand that service throughout our, throughout our schools. We're also looking at, in that area, looking at the youth development specialists, and I think we've had a presentation on the youth development department, so I think you're well aware of the importance of having a strong foundation of uh, mentorship in our division, student leadership, and opportunities for students to, uh, to build healthy relationships, and many of the, um, of the things that, benefit, that come with the benefit of having a strong youth development program. The other area is school safety that we're focused on, and our, our um, budget areas this year is to continue to add to some security to our elementary levels. Uh, we feel we're adequately staffed at the secondary level, but we would like to continue to make sure that we are um, um, have good coverage at our elementary schools to ensure that not only our students but our staff um, are working in a safe and conducive environment. Um, we also will continue to, um, to improve our school intercom and security camera systems 
Uh, we've been working on those upgrades for several years, and this um, and, and no different, the 2021 budget will continue that work moving forward. So just the combination of, if you look at the cumulative uh, proposed staff additions in this proposed budget, um, looking at the three ESL teachers, two support staff, eight counselors based on the governor's proposed budget, one youth development specialist, two licensed social workers, two psychologists, three security assistants, and the two technology support specialists that will help with that digital conversion. Um, we're looking at adding 23 um, FTEs or 23 positions in this year's operational budget, in the proposed operational budget. Okay. Now to our compensation strategy. Since we are, since we, 80% uh, of our budget, it really focuses on compensation and, and benefits. It's important to us to ha first have a compensation strategy. Um, and, be, and have an, an idea of, w one, where do we need to increase, when do we need to increase, how competitive we are in the, in the, in the regional job market, and w what factors are, are, we, are benefiting our employees in terms of not only recruitment, retention, um, strategies, and, uh, and, and, and efforts. So the compensation strategy is where we, um, allow, where we really focus on remaining uh, viable in, in, the job, in the regional job market, and it's important that we continue to be ag aggressive in how we approach uh, retaining and attracting a quality, uh, quality workforce. So our goal this year is to remain competitive and attract the workforce. Um, we're, we're, looking at a, we're proposing a 3% salary increase for all employees, um, except for senior level administrators, and that would be directors and above. Uh, that, that employee group would receive a 2% uh, salary increase and uh, additionally, we will continue to make the necessary experience and, comp and compression adjustments for teachers and support staff to ensure that salaries are competitive at the starting range and for veteran teachers, for veteran employees. When we look at our teacher um, salary scale, and you've seen this slide many, many times, but it's important that we always continue to look at this slide and continue to update it um, because school divisions are, are always changing their compensation strategies. Um, we, we focused a lot on trying to uh, factor in uh, compensation for teachers beyond 10 years and above, and we still have work to do there. So that's why we'll, we will continue to recommend to the board that we look at experience adjustments because as t we, we um, have teachers beyond 10 years, we like to make sure that those teachers remain with us until retirement and continue to work with us. And the best way to do that is one, make sure that they're growing and they have a, a, a great place to work and, uh, and make an impact in, um, with students, but also to make sure that they're well compensated for the work that they do. So that's why we'll continue to include um, experience adjustments in our recommendation. We uh, also know that we are um, a need to continue to remain competitive for bus drivers. Uh, nothing moves in this division, literally, without our school buses on the road and effective and, um, and capable drivers driving those buses. So as you can see, and when in 2000, FY 2016, uh, we were at the bottom of the list there in terms of salaries. We had, um, had a difficult time attracting and retaining drivers, and we made a significant commitment to our bus drivers um, in the following uh, budgets. Um, in this current year, we also have increased from $14.17 to $14.82. And we're proposing that our bus drivers receive that uh, three percent um, increase, but also continuing to look at compression in the in their salary scales to ensure that our more veteran drivers um, remain uh, remain competitive and re remain uh, competitive in the job market as well. So um, we also have our other employee groups, uh, which will receive three uh, percent uh, increases as well, and we will also continue to look at compression with with uh, specific um, employee groups in this year's budget, um, in the FY21 budget as well. But that's where they stand in the turn of competitiveness. If you look at our child nutrition workers, um, just an important note here, our child nutrition um, services workers do not, uh, they're not part of our, um, funded through our operational budget. Um, they're funded through um, federal dollars. Um, so they are proposing that uh, we bring the uh, salaries of those um, child nutrition services workers up to the same level as custodians um, this year. To get them to get them moving in the right direction, so all um, all of they'll they'll probably receive a slightly higher raise, um, salary increase than uh, than the proposed groups that we have before us. The other areas that we are looking at, um, and I just hit um, are in health. Well, let's talk health benefits. 
health benefits, um, as we mentioned earlier, we are a self-funded school division, um, and we have seen significant increases in our um, in our claims over the past few years. We we had a few years where we had very um, minimal growth in in um, claims, but claims drive premiums, and when you have that growth in um, in claims. Uh, we have we obviously have had to make some adjustments in order to make sure that our health um, our health plan for the school division remains viable. Um, it's funded through an employee share employer share and an employee share for premiums. Uh, with that being said, last year in this current budget, uh, we've invested an additional three million dollars to shore up our health uh, health care plan to ensure and, and minimize the um, cost on employees. Um, however, in this uh, next budget, we're recommending that we continue to, that work. Um, we have no indication that claims will, will, will not follow, continue to follow that trend. Uh, we hope that that will not be the case, but we have nothing to determine that it will not. Um, so we're proposing one, that we add, um, continue to add an additional $1.7 million in the uh, health care plan, with $1.1 million uh, being at the cost of the school board or school division and uh, $600,000 being at the cost of employees. Now, what will that look like in terms of dollars in their pocket? Um, depending on what plan employees have, they may see anywhere from $2.50 added to their premium per month or up to $33 if they have a more expensive family plan um, based on that cost. But that will cover the, the increased employee amount to shore up that, that figure. Okay. So going to categories, the non-compensation items, we're looking at uh, technology. Um, the technology um, uh, non-compensation co um, items are listed here. The biggest item in that list right there are the teacher laptops for elementary school. As you're aware, the elementary laptops are seven plus years old. They're, um, they're, many of them are non-serviceable. It's time to replace um, those laptops, and that is the largest item in that, um, in that grouping. Um, those student computers will, are associated with the digital conversion. Uh, we, we are fortunate that we already have a high volume of, um, of devices in our school division, so we do not, do not have to make such a significant investment um, at this time into student computers. But um, in terms of classroom technology, we're looking at replacing um, cla aging classroom technology at the pre-K and kindergarten levels, um, along with uh, working on, continuing to work on our VoIP licensing and uh, and a few other areas that we, uh, and assessments uh, that, were, that are computer based. So the total tab that we're looking at in terms of non-compensation non items for technology is 3.1 million additional. And operation and maintenance, you may re recall that this figure was initially um, in January when we were just starting to prioritize our, um, our budget, budget priorities. That figure was, was as high at one point, I think at $6.8 million when we initially met in January. Um, so we have continued to whittle that, that figure down to make sure that we could work towards a balanced budget. Um, those items that we had, con that we had additionally cons um, considered as well have not gone away, but we'll continue to look at opportunities in future um, uh, as revenue comes available to continue to work on some of those items that we uh, removed from the list as well. But in terms of this year's operational budget and our recommendation, uh, we're at, right now we're set at, at 5.9 million is the recommendation of non-compensation items and that with building security, operational maintenance, and other, um, other priorities. So those, um, and, and I think we've given some fairly good detail on each of those items. So rather than go into each one individually, and we'll be happy to answer any questions about any of those individual items, I'd like to, to for the sake of time, to have Ms. Rousseau come up, and she's going to present the revenue and expenditures of the FY21 proposed budget. So, Mary Lou, I'll turn it over to you at this time. Thank you, Dr. Parker, Mr. Hunter, members of the board. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I have um, a shorter version, uh, fewer slides than Dr. Parker had, and um, but a few more numbers, maybe. Uh, I do want to start with the state revenue. You know that at this point, we have um, three versions of the state budget. Uh, unfortunately, the General Assembly did not adjourn this past weekend as they were scheduled to initially. Uh, they've extended the session till uh, Thursday of this week, so let's hope that they vote on a budget and approve one then. If they do, we'll get our numbers from the state sometime next week. I doubt we'll get them before your meeting on Tuesday. So, you know, it's going to be one of those years. But anyway, we've had worse years. We've had a budget in June from the uh, from the state. So it's not as bad as that. 
Uh, anyway, we did talk to you earlier about the governor's budget. So in the first column there, we have what the uh, governor's budget is for these major areas where there are some differences. So I want to talk to you tonight about the House and Senate versions and what they might mean for us. And ultimately, there will be a version of the state budget. It won't be any of these three, probably. It'll be some you know, uh, combination of these. Uh, certainly, when the governor put his budget out in December, the um, biggest omission we felt was teacher pay. I don't think we're the only ones who felt that. Uh, that was not funded in Governor Northam's budget. Uh, the House and Senate both had um, ideas about how that might work. The House uh, offered a 2% budget in the first year. And for Newport News Public Schools, that would mean an additional $2.5 million in revenue. The Senate uh, chose a 3% one-time bonus. And were they to do that, uh, were that to be the case, we would receive $3.3 million in additional revenue from the state, in addition to the governor's budget. Uh, so we'll see how they resolve the whole salary issue. Certainly for our staff, we feel that a uh, salary increase would be better and preferable to a one-time bonus, but we'll see where they come out on that. In the area of school counselors, Dr. Parker has already mentioned the fact that the governor's budget would require us to hire eight more elementary school uh, counselors. Uh, in the case of the first year of the budget, the House and Senate both agreed with the governor's budget, and so they agreed to his staffing levels. You can see that they're listed there by level. So uh, they would uh, staff uh, one counselor for 375 elementary school students, one for every 325 middle school students, and one for every 300 high school students. Ultimately, where Governor Northam believes we need to go in the second year of his budget is to 1 to 250 at all levels. But neither the House nor Senate have agreed with that, and they both have different levels uh, for the second year. The, um, House funds 300, uh, 1 to 325, and the Senate 1 to 300. So we'll let that be next year's worry, but for this year, um, they're in kind of accord at this point at least. We'll see what the final version of the budget uh, provides. In the area of ESL, um, currently the state funds us 17 positions per thousand ESL students. The governor's recommended going to 20 positions per thousand, as Dr. Parker indicated. We certainly need additional staff in ESL, so we're happy to see the state do that. Uh, the Senate agreed with the governor, but the House has recommended uh, a slower role. They've suggested that we uh, fund 18 and a half positions per thousand students. So we'll see uh, which one prevails. Uh, we would get additional staff in either case, and you can see the additional staff numbers there um, for us. In the area of early childhood, there, uh, the budget uh, provides uh, the same in every case, uh, each version of the budget. And two changes are provided. One is a per-pupil increase, which they haven't done for a while. So they're increasing the per-pupil funding by 10% in both the first and second years. Uh, and they're increasing the class size from 18 to 20. That requires us to have a, um, both a teacher and an aide in those classes. And uh, that will allow us to serve more students uh, without hiring more staff. So that will be um, a good thing, we think. We can serve more kids. Another area that um, there's a little variability in the three versions of the budget is the area of at-risk add-on, add-on to what you might add, is add-on to our basic aid. So this is um, in recognition of the fact that students who are educationally at risk require additional services. The state has, for a while now, funded what they call an at-risk add-on to basic aid. You can see that the governor's budget included $3.9 million for that. The House um, raised that to 4.4. And the Senate is uh, at the same level as the um, governor's budget. So again, we'll see what uh, version of the budget prevails um, for at-risk add-on at the point we get a final budget. As we shared with you earlier in um, an earlier meeting, the state revenue based on the governor's budget for us would be $209.4 million. If you look strictly at the House's version of the budget, that would be an additional $2.9 million over the governor's budget. And the Senate version would be $1.8 million. So it looked like uh, to us that there would be additional funding in either event. What we have done for this budget for you tonight is we've used the governor's budget except for uh, we have added $2.5 million, assuming that the House version of the budget prevails on salaries. So we have used $211.9 million, as you can see in this slide. So. Uh, that would mean an increase of uh, $14.5 million from the state, or 7.3 percent, and you know, we could say it's about time that we get some meaningful increase in funding. Uh, and we have had good increases from the state, but this will certainly help us in many areas. Um, we have requested, uh, we plan to request $2.5 million in additional funding from the city. And uh, right now, our federal revenues look about flat. 
And in the area of other revenue, we expect to see a $100,000 increase, largely in the area of indirect costs. Those are costs that we're allowed to charge our grants and our child nutrition program for support that our departments provide to them. So that's what that is. So in total, our budget for next year would be $330 million, $17.1 million, 17 million over this year's budget, or a 5.5% increase. So that's what the budget that we're presenting uh, provides. A picture for those who like pictures instead of charts. Um, this shows you in red the portion of our budget that would be funded by the state for next year, 64.2%. The city is the blue slice, 34.3%. And then you can see the other two small slices, federal and other, really very small slices. But, you know, we're happy to have it. Uh, we want to show our expenditures in two ways, as often we do. This way you've, you've seen a couple of times. Uh, this is our expenditures shown by major cost category. So the blue slice here are the salaries, as Dr. Parker mentioned. Over 80% of our costs are always in, tied up with people costs. And next year's budget, it would be 85%, 60% in salaries, and 25% in employee benefits. That leaves uh, that green slice, is what we call the all other slice, 15%. This year's budget was 13 So it moves in the right direction, giving us a little more uh, space for other things that need to be funded in our budget beyond people costs. This is our um, budget by function. So this is how we are required to report our budget and our cost to the state. In these are the reporting categories. So certainly, uh, we always want to see instructional services uh, at 70 or above. So our budget next year will be 72.6%. Uh, the other categories are pretty self-explanatory, except possibly operations and maintenance, which is really our plant services folks, our uh, custodial department our security force, and our uh, warehousing operations. So that's what's included in operations and maintenance. So you can see the relative share of each of those other parts to our, um, to our budget. OK, so this is a little, um, there's a lot of numbers on this page. So this is really the worst slide, I suppose, uh, as, as compared to others. Um, this is the slide where we balance the budget. So this is how it all works. Um, as Dr. Parker indicated, we're providing two or three percent raises for uh, employees, and so that cost is 6.9 million, 2.3 for every one percent. And then for the compression and experience adjustments that are provided in this version of the budget, uh, that would cost 2.1 million dollars. We are providing an additional uh, 23 positions in the budget, so that cost is 1.8 million. Uh, the turnover in this budget is also $1.8 million, so that recognizes that all positions won't be filled every day and we'll have some vacancies, so that accounts for that. Um, we did find in our budget about 12 positions, I think it was 12 positions, that uh, or in this year's budget that are vacant, that were for where we had transfers to grants, both teachers and teacher assistants, so they aren't needed in next year's budget, so those kind of offset some of the new positions, so that's $700,000. As Dr. Uh, Parker mentioned, the health plan cost for next year increase is expected to be $1.7 million. We do uh, propose to uh, share that with employees to the extent of $600,000. Um, this is something you may or may not be familiar with. Um, this even uh, predated me, it goes back a ways. Um, in 1995, the school division provided an early, opted into an early retirement program that the VRS offered. And that debt, the related debt, was structured over 30 years. And so there's an increase in that debt for next year of $800,000. That debt, unlike the construction and uh, school maintenance debt, is on our books, not on the city's. And so that we have to pay. So that's going up $800,000 next year. Um, as we reported to you earlier, the VRS rate itself is going up almost a full point next year from 15.68 to 16.62%. So that's a $1.8 million increase. And then Dr. Parker has already reported to you the um, cash capital, we're calling them uh, on this slide, technology and maintenance uh, issues that are, we are addressing in this budget of 3.1 and 5.9 million respectively. And as the, in every budget, there are some one-time costs that don't need to be repeated. And so in 2020's budget, we identified $3.9 million of costs that we don't need to carry forward into 2021. So when you do the math, that's 17.1, which is, as you recall, was the additional revenue that we have. So that's how we were able to balance our budget. So we still have just a couple things ahead of you. Um, we have uh, on next Tuesday, we have um, a joint work session with the city council. I think that comes first. And then later, you'll have a, a public hearing on your budget or on the superintendent's proposed budget. And then on March 24th, the following week, we're going to ask you to adopt a budget because by April 1st, we have to have a budget provided to the city council. So 
um, we have a lot to do in just a couple of weeks, and we are going to have to do that whether, no matter what we hear from the, from the state or when. And then, um, assuming that the state does finish their work up, the city has to appropriate funding to us by May the 15th, and we, I think, think that May 14th is the actual date of their meeting when they will do that. So that's the proposed budget from Dr. Parker, and uh, here I would be glad to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Mr. Brett, uh, Mr. 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 Brown and Mr. Harris next. Okay. Um, first question is about the bus driver pay, and that question is um, what would be the cost impact of getting to $15.50 an hour, uh, and what would be the cost impact of getting to $16 an hour? We've been flirting with the $15 an hour for the bus drivers for a number of years, and each year I've uh, made a comment about can we get to $15 an hour? So I'm going to, um, this year, I'd like to see us get over $15 an hour, especially since uh, we have a neighbor there, um, uh, a neighbor next to us that's already over $15 an hour. So that's going to be my question, $15.50 and $16 an hour. Okay, well, we can look at that. I do think that um, we do plan to increase our salary scales next year by 1.5%, so I think that will take us over 15 but I don't think it's going to take us 1550 So we can look at 1550 and 1650 And I just think it's important. Um, on the peninsula, given our school division relies mm -hmm. on transportation and bus drivers more heavily, probably right. than any other division on the peninsula, mm -hmm. that we have to um, remain at the top in order to to, um, to keep our, our buses staffed. My second question is around the, the security officers. So the three security officers that are proposed to be added, are that is that portion covered by the state, or is that something that we're, um, we're asking support for, local support for? The state does not provide any funding for security officers. And what is the what's the cost of the, the three officers? Wow, um, I don't have that fact right in my head. Probably 120. Uh, we'll, we'll get it. Okay. I, I don't know right sure. off hand. We can yeah. certainly get that for you. Okay. Okay. Probably 40. Yeah. And and then I see that um, on the middle on the on the school counselors, mm -hmm. we, we're adding the eight. The yes, eight sir. would get us to a ratio of um, 375 to one at the elementary school level. Yes, sir. But what would our ratio be at the middle school and high school level? Yes, we, uh, we have shared that with you in the past. Let me get that yeah. for you. We do have it. We are, uh, we are staffed better than the state's ratio at high school, and we are right around the state ratio at middle school. But and, we do have more, uh, we have more guidance counselor, I'm sorry, school counselors at the high school level. And then the, the, the just to that question is, at the 325 to 1 mm -hmm. middle school level, we are not, uh, the suggestion is not to add more middle school counselors, but mm -hmm. aren't we behind the 325 to 1? I think and, we needed to add one counselor, as I recall. Okay. 1.5. 1.5 counselors mm -hmm. would be needed to get to, okay. Okay. And then the, the last um, question is more, is, is more just a comment to the, to the board in general. Um, just like I uh, often call out uh, our partners in city council when they're not consistent, re I want to remind the board in terms of consistency that we agreed, I believe this was about a year ago, that cash capital at the end of the year that we would present that to city council and give them an opportunity to refuse those uh, those projects and those, those efforts first before we work them into our budget. So I'll just remind the board that that's something that we agree to and that uh, uh, I would hope that we honor our agreement and, and carry that out before we go into the cash capital of 5.9 that we have uh, made a presentation to city council to allow them to review that 5.9 cash capital. Could I address that? Yeah, yeah could be. Uh, I, think, I think we did. We know where it went. So, <clears throat> so keep in mind that in no operational budget will you spend every will you spend 100 percent of your budget you don't in a monthly budget you don't budget 100 percent of your of your income right um because anything could come up and halfway through the month you might be out of money <clears throat> it's the same thing with operational spending it's it's totally appropriate that uh in a in a in a fiscal cycle that you may have to at least around anywhere from one to two percent of your budget um unspent by the end of it because anything could happen you have unfilled uh positions you have uh you know contracts that that uh that where you may have gotten a deal and or you may have dis discontinued anything can happen over a fiscal cycle so it's it's totally appropriate to have anywhere from one to two percent of your operational budget unspent um so with that being said these um we were asked by city council to identify identify, identify. how those dollars were being spent right right so we, we did that in this, this current year's budget, right? We identified cash capital, which is what which was the request of several of our city council members. 
to identify what cash capital items we would have with that with that percentage of our revenue that that remain that goes unspent. That will still be the case. We will still have one to two percent in every budget cycle. Say so. We have whittled down a presented a balanced budget this evening that meets the needs of the school division, knowing that we will still have uh, have that. And I think that also is a conversation we we must have with the city manager and council because um, you this if we go and ask, okay, well, why don't you take all of our cash capital? But knowing that we're going to have two percent unspent, right. mm -hmm. that's that's a that's a difficult conversation to have. So oh, the no, logic not, of that, not, I just yeah. want to make sure the board understands yeah. the, the, mm -hmm. the, what, you're, yeah. what, what we're talking right. about here is that we've, we, we know that, uh, that it's reasonable and the city knows and the right. city has unspent revenue at the end of the year as well. Okay? So we know it's reasonably, reasonable that 100% uh, that of your budget will not be spent. And if you budgeted 100% and overspent that budget, we're violating the law. So if any, if any concerned citizens wonder why we don't budget 100% of our revenue, it's because if we spend overspend our budget by a dollar, we basically violate the law and state code, right? This board does and I do. Um, so we, we obviously understand that one to 2% is reasonable um, at the end of a fiscal cycle. And we obviously know that we have maintenance and uh, cash capital items that we have traditionally used those dollars for. Um, we will continue to, to have those. We've just identified those items in our budget. Right. So, uh, so if we had an excess that we were not able to manage beyond that 2% or, or whatever, it would be reasonable for the city to maybe take on those cash capital items for that revenue, for, for those items beyond that 1% to 2%. But I believe that in this budget, 5.9 million is, is fairly reasonable, and it is within the bounds of what we were discussing. Yeah, and just to clarify, I'm not proposing giving any of the money back. <laughs> I'm not proposing giving anybody. Um, so it's identified. Right, it's, I just it, right, sure it's identify, right. identify the, the, the funding, the use of the 5.9 million and remind city council that they had an opportunity to write a refusal, that they denied those projects, many of them, and that that's why we're pursuing the 5.9 million for those cash capital projects that were denied during the capital budget process. Okay. And we did not make that recommendation this evening. I want us to be clear right. on that piece. Right. We did not make that recommendation because we feel we're in the means to pay to, right. to cover right. those 5.9% right. right. in our budget. Right. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Mr. Harris. Yes, I had one that's pretty short. Uh, the Victor Romeo Sierra retirement increased 30 years. When do we get from under that? Yes, that was my question. 2025. 2025. 2025. Okay. 25? We're close. Okay. All right. And what's our, what's our, um, so it was 1.8 this year? It increased year. by 800,000 this year. And okay. next year it will, you know, I'm just curious. I'm just wondering. Like, what is the. I'm, two things, I think. So, um, the 1.8 million is the VRS that we pay for all our employees right. that right. the rate went up. Mm -hmm. That's 1.8 million. So, the 800,000 is debt service on this early retirement plan right. that began okay. in 1995. The debt was structured over 30 years. It's on the city's books, like all of our debt is, because mm -hmm. we can never have debt for any purpose, but we have to service that debt. That was the arrangement made back then, and that mm -hmm. arrangement continues. And I don't remember the debt schedule necessarily. Dr. Best, we can certainly get that for you. I think, it's, I think once it goes up, it's kind of flat for the next okay. four years, but we'll, we'll check and get that to you. Okay. okay. That was curious. Yeah, the yeah. kink up this year was just kind of unfortunate. Okay. But we don't get to structure it. Five years will be done. So, um, four. Mr. This is 21's budget. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Earl's laws. So looking at our 23 positions that we're going, that we're including in this budget, we're looking at eight counselors, two licensed clinical social workers, and two professional counselors. Is that correct? Psychologists. Yeah, I think that's right. Let's Psychologists. Go Psychologists. Psychologists. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. So let's say um, when the governor's budget comes in, how much will they, do we anticipate that they will supply for us to do the eight elementary school counselors? 800,000. 800,000. 800,000, okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I have a question. Uh, Dr. Bess. Um, for the, wait a minute, I'm trying to understand my chicken scratch. Okay, for the um, AIDS, if the ratio increases to 18 to 20, mm -hmm. For students, you said we won't need any additional staff. Right. So the well, but we'd be able to have two more kids in every classroom. Okay. Right. I, right. With the same teacher and aide. With the same teacher and aide, so mm -hmm. they'll still have half 
the aides will be in the classrooms like half. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to. Um, well, no, they're full time in the pre K. You think about kindergarten. This is pre K. Okay, in pre K, it's a full time teacher and aide. Okay. In order for us to have 20 kids in a classroom. Right now we have 18 with a full time teacher and aide. Okay. It's kindergarten where we share. And then, question. Um, I'm sorry, is that a local mandate or is that a Which? state? For pre K? Right. That's a requirement by the state, the BPI okay. program. Mm -hmm. Then I have one more about the elementary security. So um, this will kind of, for the, the plans for the three are to go full time at certain schools or still to be part time with that three. They'd be full time officers, and I'm not sure how they're going to be assigned as needed, I think. So. Okay. I can speak to that. Mm -hmm. we, we currently have um, 13 site schools that are still sharing security officers. Right and 15 that have full time. So we would make a decision with Dr. Nelson on where we can uh, place those other three. Okay, thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Question. Anyone else? Ms. Algerman? Yes, just out of curiosity, as far as hiring with the CNS workers, this cafeteria, has that been an issue given the, the pay? I'm just- Oh, good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I see, I see. I was wondering about that. For lots of reasons we struggle, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. um, pay is one of those, but the other is our hours. Um, mm -hmm. Right. You know, so we're, we're not, it's not like going to McDonald's and being able to work a full eight hour shift. And so um, it's a couple of reasons why we struggle with that. But, yeah. So I'm wondering if we can look at that to make it, of course, more appealing as far as, because I know how important it is. Right, well we, yeah. are, gonna, we are gonna increase their pay. Um, so they're gonna, I think the starting pay for them next year will be 11.04, if I recall correctly. Um, so that's going to be, in comparison to the others, it'll be comparable. They'll move yes, up the. Yes. Yes. Okay. As well as custodians. Yes. Okay. And but there's a, not a lot we can do with the schedule. For Johnny. Anyone else? There being none. Uh, Dr. Parker, Ms. Russo, thank you for the report. Thank, thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. And again, if the board uh, has any questions, please uh, feel free to send those electronically to myself uh, or, or Mrs. Russo directly. Um, and because you know where I may go with most of the questions anyway. Right. <laughs> but uh, and and, uh, and and I would like to thank the budget team and uh, and all of my staff for putting together uh, this this uh, proposed budget. It was a lot of work for our uh, staff. We feel very confident that this, uh, this budget will move the, the, the bar forward for our school division in, in many different areas, in particular in mental health, in terms of academic uh, um, opportunities for students. So we feel very positive that this is a very um, uh, supportive budget of our current strategic direction. I'd just like to remind uh, the public that, uh, that, that the board will, be, um, will engage um, and be willing to listen to the public's uh, on March 17th at 6.30 here in this room for the uh, for the school board public hearing on the proposed budget and I look forward to uh, bringing back this uh, item as an action item for the board at the March 24th school board meeting and thank you mr. chairman for the opportunity okay thank you and just to let you know that the budget uh, development is on our website uh, for the public to review so at that time um, dr. Parker do you have any more comments just short mr. chairman <clears throat> Um, I did not prepare uh, formal remarks, but I wanted to just, uh, while the public is chiming in, is viewing in, I wanted to assure our public that our school board and our staff are really working uh, hand in hand with the city and state officials, the health department and uh, our fire department, uh, many of our local officials in uh, um, responding and monitoring the coronavirus uh, concerns uh, within the com community and abroad. Um, this issue is unique, um, very different, uh, be, and, and extends well beyond school board policy. Um, but uh, I think with the support from the city and from our health department, we are ready to respond as needed should we have an incident that requires us to take the appropriate action to keep staff or students safe. Uh, please visit our website. Uh, we have links to some important information as well as not only from Newport News, but also from the health department. Um, that we feel will be helpful to our um, community. So if you're looking for any specific information, please visit our website. It's on the front page of our website, 
and there are links with more information and we'll continue to keep that updated uh, as appropriate so uh, mr. chairman I want to make sure that our community knows that we're on the job and we're making sure that uh, we uh, can are responding to the needs of our staff and students thank uh, you no, dr. Parker thank you for that update uh, next uh, item number four matters by our school board uh, dr. best Having more comments. Just, just very briefly, I would like to thank Dr. Parker, Ms. Russo, and, and all of the staff members for your hard work um, with the budget and making it just so easy to understand. And I'd like to thank Mr. Finneran for your updates from the uh, General Assembly. Really, really helpful to keep us abreast and make it succinct for all the things that they do. So the, the, the budget uh, process was something I was a little apprehensive about coming on the school board because I just was like, I just envisioned it being just so overwhelming, but I would like to just thank the staff for making it as painless as possible. And I encourage the public to um, take advantage of every opportunity to um, stay informed as to what's happening with the budget. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Best. Mr. Harris. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I also would like to thank Dr. Parker and um, Ms. Mary Lou and the staff, senior staff, for uh, preparing this budget. Uh, there's a lot of talk going on about our budget as usual, uh, but you know I, I'm, I'm confident uh, that we always put our best foot forward. So thank you for that. You know, it's nice to leave here with a vote of confidence, and you're able to speak to citizens, uh, you know, mm -hmm. forthright and honestly. Uh, so I really appreciate that. Uh, also, Mr. Farron, thank you for all your updates and welcome back. Um, <laughs> you wasn't wheeled in, correct? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I caught him when he, when he first went out, and, you know, so uh, I can understand broken bones. So welcome back. Um, also, uh, you know, out at Fort Eustis, we, you know, people are preparing for, you know, for the coronavirus, and I think I've uh, emailed a couple of my constituents separately uh, <laughs> about some of the, some of the updates. So just just keep that in mind. You know they said to do to continue to do the basic stuff. Wash your hands more than 20 seconds. Hot water. You know, keep six feet, I guess, away from individuals. I guess. But, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you know, sometimes you, you have to you have to keep an open. I mean, you have to you know laughter sometimes is the best medicine. You know I mean? Indeed. So hopefully, you know, uh, that's all we need is laughter. But I, I think our nation is, is finally realizing that, you know, this, is, this could be a pandemic. And so just uh, if you feel sick or don't feel well, just make sure you stay at home. All right. Um, I think we'll be able to compensate you for that. Right, Dr. Paul? Yes, sir. All right. Good. All right. So other than that, thank you very much, uh, staff. You did a great job. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, Ms. Alger. Yes, I want to say thank you. Uh, the literacy, the part of the budget that really uh, speaks to the tiered intervention is what's going to move the needle for literacy. So that is a big plus. Um, this week I had a chance to visit Riverside and uh, read a book about Katherine Johnson in her honor. Uh, so I just uh, want to definitely um, take this moment to say that um, that is somebody that will be definitely missed. So it was great to share her story uh, to different students throughout the school. And that's it uh, for me. And thank you. A great job uh, as far as the budget, uh, as always, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ely. I want to thank the staff for the amazing presentation they put on today. It was very informative and very detailed. And thanks to our um, superintendent for the great partnership that you continue to build with our City Council Partners. It's also I had the opportunity to attend Newsom Park Elementary School. They had a parade for just Read Week. It was just amazing. Um, special thanks to the Prompt and the staff for putting on that amazing presentation. And that's it. Thank you. Mr. Brown. All right. Well, I'll be uh, brief this evening because uh, normally this is the time of the year that I get on my soapbox and uh, start um, uh, rattling the can about the raises. but. We uh, set a target of the 3% raise, and I see a presentation tonight with a 3% raise in it, so that is a good way to shut me up. Uh, <laughs> so you want to know the, the, the secret, uh, it's uh, get those raises in there. So um, I'm uh, very excited about the budget and what has been put together. I do think that this is a budget that really moves us forward. Eight elementary school counselors, 
is really going to pay dividends uh, for us in the long run. We're, we're really going to see, I believe we'll see uh, significant gains in our youth development and student achievement. Uh, where I'm going to keep pushing is just two more in there for middle school. So remember, we uh, uh, almost got those extra two last year. Those are two I'm still going to uh, push for at the middle school level to see if we can get two more there. But um, a very, um, I think, a really great budget that reflects, uh, I think, really a listening of the board and our priorities and what we uh, had voiced uh, to the administration uh, during the, the run-up to the to budget. And so I, I really appreciate that. Uh, those thoughts being reflected in the budget presentation that we saw here tonight. And I want to say to uh, Mr. Finneran, welcome back as well. And I'll thank him for his updates. Uh, I believe that um, without Mr. Finneran, we, the Aviation Academy would be in much uh, worse um, uh, shape without his, uh, him alerting the board to the need for advocacy, advocacy uh, for the Aviation Academy. I believe that at this point in time, the House of the Senate has um, maybe successfully worked uh, some of that money back into the budget. We'll see. Uh, we're still on pins and needles to, to see that, but uh, hopefully we do see that, uh, that funding come in, uh, which only, just to, for the public to understand, that's only helpful in the operations of the Aviation Academy. We're not talking about the building itself, which is still in, uh, it, it's in the condition that it's in and is in desperate need of, of uh, replacement. Um, and that's just going to be my last comment is as we uh, close out this operational budget season and move into our capital budget season, which will be next, uh, that will be first and foremost. I believe that uh, we should be uh, making plans now and uh, have an action plan and a timeline in place to get our DMV Aviation Academy replaced as soon as possible so that students have the uh, facility that they need for training for the jobs that are going to prepare them for the 21st century. And with that, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Uh, Vice Chair, Ms. Searles Laws. So um, I always go close to last, but I sound redundant. Thank you for all of your hard work. What I really um, appreciate, though, is that the budget season doesn't start like today or a couple of weeks ago. You guys have done a really, really good job of keeping us abreast of what we're considering and what's most important and listening to what our concerns are. This is truly a budget, I feel, that we can be proud of. We've got... Um, We've got the student mental health piece there, um, taking care of our teachers, the one-to-one, -one, the move towards one-to-one -to -one technology, the care for our ESL population, um, and reading, so fundamental. So uh, I think the biggest thing at this point that I am hopeful for is that as we um, accept or adopt this budget, that we don't think that we have arrived, that we continue in the same vein to move forward in these areas. I do feel very confident, though, that at this point we do have a better relationship with City Council, and I think that that will be um, evident as we move forward during the course of this year as we work through this budget as well as the Capitol. So thank you. Thank you. So I guess it's me between me and the end of, end of this meeting. Again, great things are happening in Newport News Public Schools. Um, Dr. Parker, Ms. Russo, your team, senior staff, a job well done on the budget presentation. Uh, I believe the input from the board, senior staff, uh, teachers and the like, I think it is all representative um, into that budget. And again, I'm going to echo what uh, my vice chair said that I believe that we are building a relationship with our city council and so I want to say here publicly thank you city council for the meetings that you had with the superintendent and our executive team uh, this year we actually had an opportunity to speak with them about the budget on several occasions so that that is true and I hope that uh, those meetings will pay dividends and that being said, I, before we end, I do want to recognize that our student representative is here. Uh, Mr. Gore, how are you doing? Thank you for showing up and being here. You, I know it's, I, see you come, I saw you come in um, real early ago. Again, thank you for being here this evening. Um, that said, I think I'm going to leave most of my comments until next week. But uh, that being said, we will adjourn the meeting. No more comments. I consider this meeting adjourned. Good stuff, one hour.